Good energy today, huh? Well, yeah. well, then Clarence walks in. <laughs> All right, what do you guys got today? Are we working today, or are you just gonna do the medical uh, around the medical tree drill here? Well, apparently there's a drill to go to. What's what you got? I don't have anything for you. Well, let's go. Anything up, updates on him? On who? Well, let's go. Yeah, he's died. We're still looking at his shoulder. You know, his shoulder injury. He will not practice today. Yeah. Is that something that would? Linger for a few days. I mean, you don't want to push him too much now. And just what, what sort of time frame do, do you feel the need to look out to bring anyone else in, or do you think it'll be shorter than that? Yeah, you know, I don't think we're there. You know, right, right now. Um, I mean, I don't see him practicing today or tomorrow. So I think once we get to next week, we'll have a better, better handle on it. Mike, what, what most impresses you about Dan Quinn as a defensive coordinator and the impact he's created last year? You know, I, th I think the first thing I would start with with Dan is his, uh, is his consistency. Uh, I think it's so important in roles of leadership uh, to be consistent uh, in, in everything you do. His, his approach, his energy level, um, he, he does a great job in the area of relationship building. So, I mean, his consistency is, is, is outstanding. So, uh, so many other good attributes, but that to me, I would say that's probably top of the list. Mike, you've talked about how if Player, or if quarterbacks stop throwing at a cornerback, it's the ultimate compliment. If that happens for someone like Trayvon, how does that impact the rest of the defense, and how does his, how do his teammates need to step up? Well, he's you know it's by making the next guy, you know, guy next to you better, and uh, you know that's you know when you talk about players, you, have, you know you, you know they're all good players. You know, every one of these guys, you know, and then there's there's guys that have. You know, good players have great moments, and there's and there's great players. But the elite players, you know, they make everybody around them better. You know, and and as, those are the types of things that that would fall into that category. So when you have that type of respect, um, you know, where you're able to tilt the field one way, it's it's create more opportunities for others. And uh, you know, that, that's all part of you know the team component of it. And and I think it definitely speaks volumes about the respect uh, that you know, I know that we have for Trayvon, and he's only going into his third year. Tyler Smith's focus so far at, at left guard, and does the blood split injury at all accelerate him seeing more reps at tackle? I'm oh, sorry, Mike, would you say the, Smith, his focus? He's been mostly concentrated at left guard. Oh, reps? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's, um, you know, we're trying to just, I think like, you know, most of the young guys, are, we're trying to give him, give him something that he can get really comfortable with. You know, we started in the spring where, Oh, he was probably 60, 40, you know, guard and tackle. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we want to give him more pure guard reps, you know, just to get him comfortable. You know, I think that's, that's important and let him build a good foundation in there. Have you seen, have you seen him progress? Just, oh, yeah. It looks like his eyes are more disciplined. Can you maybe just detail his, his involvement, his evolution since you first got him? You know, I'm very pleased not only with Tyler, but really the whole offensive line. You know, let's, let's be honest, off-season program and ramp up are, you know, it's not the, the, it, it's not the preferred training environment for, for, for linemen. So, um, you know, and, and they probably clearly, in my opinion, have the smallest window to get ready, you know, as far as the padded work and the things you need to get done. So, uh, but I, I really give Joe and Jeff a lot of credit um, just in the area of fundamentals. And I, I think you're really seeing our young, our young guys as a group uh, I think they're really off to a good start, uh, and you know the fact that you're just you're practicing in helmets. You know they they, they obviously don't get the pad to work until next week. What did you see in Jabril Cox last year before the injury, and can you talk about where where he is now coming back, and what what your expectations are? For him? Uh, Jabril's very bright, uh, very instinctive, but I, I tell you, he's so smooth. Uh, you know just the way in his his reaction and instincts. Uh, so uh, game comes natural to him. You know I, I think he's. He's quicker and, and, and faster than you, than you may think, uh, but you know I, I I thought he reached that level of confidence and comfort pretty pretty quickly for a young guy. So uh, you know he didn't have a lot of opportunities, but but when he did, you know he you know he made plays. Were you guys about to maybe give him more snaps last year before he got hurt? Because I think he had least Jalen at that time. Mm -hmm. so was that more about Oh, definitely. We were it definitely that was that was uh, part of the, part of the plan there. You know, he was definitely lining up to get to get more opportunities. I mean, obviously he had the injury that, that on the special teams, but uh, he, you know, he, excuse me, on special teams he was actually playing extremely well and had more opportunities there first. Uh, you know, but 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 defensively, he, his role was getting ready to expand. Mike, when you're here in Green Bay, you had receivers move up a peg like Jennings mm -hmm. and Jordy, and uh, maybe even Devontae Adams for a little bit too. What's the challenge that those guys have like for CD when he goes from being the, the, the quote two to a quote one? 
Well, I, I think it's like anything. It, the, you know, the light's brighter. You know, both. You know, as far as internally, as far as the responsibility opportunities that that, he, that he's that he's given, but also you know the way defenses will, will react to him. You know, and I think really when you look at CD and that you know that, that group of got group of receivers in Green Bay, and it's you know it's it's very similar to how we we do it in here in Dallas. You know, the ability for receivers to play inside and outside to me to to, to, to me is a, at a pre at a premium because. You know, it's you know, when you only play one or the other, it's it, you're making it's a lot easier for the defense to to take it away. So, and I, I think really CD's experience of playing so much in a slot last year is only going to help him now that he's at the flanker. So, I mean, you know, the, the the ability for him to be in the one spot, you know, the two spot in the slot, and also the three spot. So, uh, we got to move him around. So, we, with that, that, that we should be able to create more opportunities for him. Mike, Mike you, uh, talked, you talked about uh, Micah Parsons taking that second year jump. When a guy has as good a rookie year as he did, is that a maybe a more compelling challenge for you and the other coaches to try and find ways to tweak a player like Micah to make him that much better to, to find that to help him find that second year jump? I think uh, clearly when we we talk about second year jump, you know the way, the way we view it, and then maybe the way it's viewed externally or from others, you know it, it, there, there, there's more there's more depth to that. And what I'm talking about is you know. It's not just all about his statistics. You know, he, he he's going to make others better around him just 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 because the offense has to treat him differently. I mean, you know, his ability from you know a his pure ability, but b his matchup potential is very high. So I mean, so the the, the way that he'll be treated in the defensive front, I think will the, with a much brighter focus will 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 make others better. So. That in itself, he's got to get credit as part of his second year jump. So, um, you know, so it's, it's the stat part of it is is not the whole story, you know. And but you can see you can see his comfort level, you know. Obviously, the instincts and awareness. He's he's a gifted young man. Uh, so, uh, but I definitely definitely is, and, you know, clearly where we were this time last year, and where he is today, he's he's at a different level. What stood out to you last season about the way Dan Quinn was able to isolate Micah in terms of finding one on one matchups for him when he was running? Mike, I'm having a hard time. Michael, I'm having a hard time hearing you in the beginning. What was the first part? What stood out about how Dan Quinn was able to isolate Micah as a pass rusher and find one-on-one -on -one opportunities? Yeah, I, I think Dan and you know really the whole staff. You know, you know every time you, you talk about scheme adjustment and so forth, you know the, the ability to, to to keep moving him around. No different. It's, it's really the same answer I gave for CD. You know, the ability to to play rush rush responsibility from the linebacker position. And then obviously play linebacker responsibility from the defensive line position. So I think that clearly that flexibility and it, you know it's it's obviously a recognition of, of his abilities because he can do all of that. Um, I, I think you know it's going to be more about not what we do but how much we do it. You know what, what was it was, were we 60 40 last year? Is it going to be 30 70? So those are the kind of conversations that we've had. But his ability to play on and off the ball and to be a constant focus of the offense. You know that, that that's a huge asset for us. Y'all still get wild by watching him, going back and watching him on tape and practice. I mean, some of the things he's done just yeah. so far, he even though it's shorts and shirts, but I mean, just the way he gets to the quarterback. I yeah, I mean, he's unique. I mean, just no doubt. I mean, his speed and his quickness and his strength, you know, the combination of having it all. I mean, there's, you know, there's there's not a play, excuse me, not a day that there's a play, particularly in his pursuit and his finish, you know, just, just the way he, you know, takes away angles and he breaks on the football. Uh, you know he's super, super instinctive and slippery in the phone booth. So I mean, he just has a lot, a lot of natural, instinctive playmaking ability. But yeah, he's obviously very, very impressive. On the other side of that, how will that help Kelvin or Terrence Steele? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, iron sharpens iron. I think we all we all know that. We believe it. And then uh, this this is a great time. I mean, to, really to have this training environment and to push each other like this. I mean. I, you know, I think we're off to a good start. Third day in a row, it's a little bit of a hump day. It's you know red zone day, so. Um, but yeah, the, the individual stuff is you know it's getting ramped up, and it, you know obviously go to a different level next week with the pads. How does Joseph look the first two days here? Kelvin Joseph looks really good. I, I tell you what, he's done some uh, dynamic things on just some of the special team drill work. You know, when you you, you watch him and talk about iron sharp and iron, you know him and C.J. Goodwin going against each other, so. Um, you know, I, I really do, really do look for Kelvin to make that jump also. So I think he's done some really good things. And also applied to the classroom because I know he sat a lot last year. Yeah, no, he's, you know, I, I think just like everything too, you know, when, when we talk about the classroom, you know, the communication, you know, uh, part of it is, 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 is with, 
we, we all need to grow in. So, you know, I, I think he's communicating a lot more. You know, he's a, he's not a you know very outwardly you know personality until you get to know him. You know, it's you know that's part of his makeup. But you know, I, I think he's a, a lot more comfortable. You know, we're, 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 we're not only what's asked to do, him, but the specifics, particularly in the areas of adjustments and so forth. Uh, but no, he's having a good camp. Dak and Dalton mentioned that he's that Dak has increased the velocity on his ball this offseason. Have you noticed that? And what's the one benefit of that? If so, and two, how does that affect the way that everyone needs to think of timing? I don't think it's a timing issue, you know, uh, because, you know, the one thing about velocity, you know, the other component of that is the anticipation element that's involved with, with every throw from the quarterback. So, um, you know, if you, you, you think about it, you know, the natural trend for quarterbacks is that, you know, you, 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 you play, the longer you play, you play with more anticipation and awareness and your velocity probably decreases. You know, when, when you're younger, you have higher velocity and not as high, you know, instinct and awareness and anticipation. So. Um, you know, as he continues the, you know, seven, year seven, uh, the comfort and the command of, of, of the offense, you know, so he's definitely, I feel like he's playing a, a touch faster. And I think where you'll see the, the improvement in the arm flexibility will be more in the, in, in the throws he changes his, uh, his arm slot. Uh, that's, that's what stands out to me, you know, his ability to, you know, he's increased the flexibility in the elbow and the shoulder. So, um, and you could tell he's, he's, He's confident with that too now. So I mean, it's just like anything. It's, you know, it's part of your game. You know, you know, creating that that technique or you know, it's is the first step. But really, you know, utilizing and apply it is the second step. And then, you know, the third part is being comfortable to do it in practice and in games. And you're definitely seeing that. How important is it to be able to change arm slots? It's very important. I mean, this this game is all built around how do you pressure the quarterback. I mean, it's you know, it's. Uh, you know, we we have our our fundamental Cowboy Six. We emphasize every day, and and the, the fundamental aspect of of winning is you know today's focus is big plays. You, you cannot you cannot be successful in a National Football League if you don't make big plays. So uh, the ability and the focus of the defense to put pressure on the quarterback is the end of the day. You know, the quarterback's gonna he's gonna be the one with the ball in his hand that's gonna go win the game at the end. And we all know what the percentage of these games that come down to the end of the game are so high. Especially in playoff football, so the ability to change your arm slot is important. You know, dealing, excuse me, dealing with pressure and and all the things that uh, that they have to deal with on a daily basis. Mike, a year ago, your safety position was really unsettled coming into camp. How do you view it now, and do you have the chance to have some quality depth with some of the rookies? Good, I, I tell you, I, um, I have great confidence. A lot of depth. Uh, we have got some young guys. Actually, you know. Talking with John, you know, Fossil this morning, you know, you know, just kind of going through some of the young guys. I, I think we got an excellent depth there, and we got some guys that are going to really, really push, push on special teams. So, clear, clearly, feeling a lot better about where we are today compared to last year because we did, we definitely had a lot of unknowns. Along those lines, Marquise Bell seems like he's kind of in the mold of Jaron Curse. Do you, do you view him that way in terms of his ability to play in the box and contribute on special teams? And what have you made of him so far? He's been extremely impressive. I mean, I, I tell you, he, he's he's probably. On the rookie class, you know, clearly one of the top guys that jumped out in the offseason program. So, you know, we, we felt, you know, right away that man, this 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 young man has a has a you know excellent chance to to do some excellent things. So, and, and he hasn't disappointed at all. So, I, I think he's mature. You know, I mean, his physical traits are you know top notch, and you know, I, I think just like anything, the vehicle of, of special teams is is definitely a path that I, I think he'll excel at. You ever miss calling plays? Of course you do. I mean, yeah, it's uh, you always miss the things that the comp anything that has to do with the competition of the game. Yeah, you definitely definitely miss that. I, I miss, you know, I miss certain aspects of game planning and, and things like that. But yeah, I mean, calling plays is is the ultimate competitive opportunity uh, on game day. You know, you have you have play callers on all three phases. But yeah, it's it's definitely something I, that I enjoyed. But you know, I, I have great confidence in Kellen. Uh, I just I, I, you know, this is year three. Him and I were just talking about this the other day. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's refreshing now when you you get to this point as a coaching staff. Like, I mean, you go to the post practice video. I, I mean, it, just the communication of everybody's on the same page. You know, our evaluation, our process of correcting and evaluating is so much cleaner. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of, okay, what about this? We're, we're kind of, we, we've had all those conversations. So, I think our staff, you know, clearly. All the way through, uh, you know, the, the cohesiveness, the understanding, uh, the collaboration, uh, you know, is, is so so much 
so much better than we were the first two years, which is which is natural. But and, and I think with that, that that helps any play caller, and I think it'll definitely help Kellen. Mike, what do you see from Anthony Brown so far? Hey, B's having a heck of a camp. I mean, I, I think. Frankly, I'll be honest. He's picked. He's picked up right where he where he left off last year. You know, it, you know. He's. Uh, I think he's someone that that uh, should get more love from you guys. Just a suggestion. But I think I think he's done. He's done a lot of good things. But more importantly, he's he's been he's very very consistent. What what I love about AB, he's just, he's the same guy every day. Um, and you know, he's he's gotten stronger. And I know in my time here, this is year year three. I think he made a big jump from the first year to the second year. And I, th I thought I thought he had a heck of a year last year, and I think he's really just picked up right where he left off. We've asked you a lot about the, the first round pick Smith here over the last few months, but how is McGovern handling that challenge and coming off what he did last year and kind of in and out a different role for him? But just at, at left guard, what, what do you see from him early in this game? I mean, Connor McGovern's off to an excellent start. I mean, you look at the off season he had; he had he had clearly his best off season. I mean, talk about strength levels, body comp all the way through. Uh, I know. I know he came into this camp extremely confident, uh, you know, based on where he is in his career and his development. So, um, very happy with his with his progress and his his flexibility that he gives us too. I mean, you know, that's. I mean, that's that's you don't get that every day. So, I mean, Connor McGovern's flexibility is tremendous, but uh, he's he's really prepared himself and he's he's off to a really good start. Mentioned the Cowboys six, and you gave us big yeah. plays. You want to give us the other five? Uh, uh, You're gonna write them down. And you call, yeah, you got ball security. Obviously, you know you got to take care of it, take it away. So you got tackling. You got to break them and you make them. Uh, blocking. You know, just got to block them and get off them. You know, you got the big play opportunity is the fourth. Uh, the uh, pursuit and finish is the fifth, and then winning the pre-snap. The mannerisms that go on pre-snap. So much of our game is played at the line of scrimmage with up, up tempo, cadence, and all those things. So those are the Six major focal points for us on a daily basis. We'll finish with Jory. Hope to see it in your book, Todd. That's some good stuff right there, just so you know. So. Mike, I'll send you a check. On a non football note, what's the story behind your best dad bracelet, and did you put those beats together yourself? Yeah, I definitely. You no, know, this is from my daughter, Gabrielle. Um, best dad, she ran out of ease, so I didn't get the ever. But, uh, you know, that's what she told me. That's, you know, I'll, t I'll take it. You know, I'll definitely take it. But, you know, Gabby's, you know, our family's very creative, starting with my wife, Jessica, but Gabby's very creative. What would Jesus do? Which I, I was, uh, I felt great that she gave it to me because she's 13, as you know, what I'm, you know what I mean by that. She's a teenager now, so, and he, she was named properly. She is Gabby. She, she did, she's been talking and hasn't stopped. So, but yeah, that's, that's from my, that's from my middle daughter there, you know, and I want to give a shout out. Thank you to my, my youngest turned 11 yesterday, so. Got some big birthdays here, you know. Izzy turned 11 yesterday. Dax 29 today. Golden Golden Year birthday. So happy times outside of football. Uh, that's I'll leave that for you and the and the guys. Okay, I can't give you everything. Good. All right. Thank you.